Hi, and welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. For those of you who haven't seen the show, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us, uh, 40 in Worcester and 20 here in Westboro. Uh, I do nothing but elder law. The other 59 do other stuff. Um, one of the reasons I started these shows several years ago now was really to supplement the, the, the seminars that I do in this area focusing on various elder law issues. But the reason for these shows is really to make sure that you understand the players that you need to know as a senior uh, who are dealing with issues that you'd be concerned about. Um, and also just to, to get a sense of what is really going on in your community that really would affect you. One of those players who I've been told you've seen a few weeks ago because she was <laughs> on here on with another prominent Westboroite, Alice Bonner, the Secretary of Elder Affairs, is my friend Christine Alessandro. So, Christine, thank you very much for coming on. Well, thank you for having me, Arthur. And uh, to start, in case people missed that great other great show, can you just tell me a little bit about you? So, you are you run a organization called Bay Path Elder Services. Yes, Bay Path Elder Services, which is yeah. the aging services access point and area agency on aging, mm -hmm. covering 14 communities here in Metro West. I am the executive <laughs> director, and we provide many programs and services for older adults and caregivers and younger persons with disabilities. Uh, In-home services, we have a caregiver program, we have a yeah. money management program, uh, we have a great caregiver program. And so by the way, when you say you do the caregiver mm -hmm. program, you manage the caregivers, right? You don't well, have we, your... we have a caregiver specialist ah, that right. goes out to assist caregivers, provides resources, provides education, provides training. Oh. I was thinking in terms of the profe the, the, the so-called paid caregivers that come in. Oh, right, yes. You have someone who actually works with the care the like the spouses and the kids and the people who are really trying to help folks exactly. who are older and who are living at home. Yes. Yeah, that's a pretty wonderful program. Yes, it is. And I always tell people when I'm doing my presentations, I said, you know, as part of being a senior, you simply have to know Bay Path Elder Services, because among other things, you're the folks who also certify mm -hmm. to Medicaid and mm -hmm. to the Commonwealth whether or not a person is, is actually eligible for nursing home benefits Correct. and also eligible for, for a lot of the money that they can get at home mm -hmm. in order to keep them out of a nursing home. So right. I said, you, you, Bay Path Elder Services is your best friend. And some people think we only mm -hmm. work with low income, very frail people, and that's not true. We have programs and services for people who are very healthy and living in the community, for example, healthy living programs like a matter of balance or chronic disease self-management. Mm -hmm. So if you're over 60, you need to know about you us. Need, yeah, <laughs> we, need, we need to know about you. And by the way, what did you do before you did that? Did you do this whole, were you born for this job? Did I was not born life? for this job. I actually worked in New York City in long-term care. Wow. So the other side of the equation, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that must have been pretty intense. That was very different than and, this. And, and now you're kind of living on the other side of the equation. You live out in Spencer, right? I you live, yeah. I live out. So you come to Westboro to come to the city, right? Absolutely. Right? You go into the big restaurants. <laughs> exactly, you know, or the, find a restaurant. That's right, that's right, that's right. So that's very exciting. So um, uh, you had mentioned that you were here with Alice and you were talking about some issues, and, and I, I want to talk about one of those just because it so directly affects Westboro and hopefully can be affecting them very soon and this, that's the initiative around developing dementia-friendly communities. And you say you were here with Alice recently, and I mm -hmm. actually had George Barrett on, the selectman who was really, who just spoke so eloquently about the importance of dealing with these issues because yes. he went through it, you know, he went through it with his, with, you know, in his own family. And so I, I think that that always gives you a kind of a rare appreciation mm -hmm. of the importance of these issues. So can you start off by just talking a little bit about when you say that you say the term dementia friendly communities everybody goes wow that'd be great well, what does that mean exactly so can you just kind of talk about how you get interested in this and how you got Bay Path interested in this and where you are where Bay Path is and then kind of what the folks in Westboro may expect how's that absolutely well our caregiver program actually currently has three components. Mm -hmm. One is the face-to-face -face intervention you can get with our caregiver specialist. Mm -hmm. The second is our website, Caregiving Metro West, mm -hmm. which offers information, resources. There's a wellness wall for folks who just want to go on the internet and get the resources. By the way, great website. Can you just Thank give you. people, a, a, and we'll try to put a banner on this, can you give them a, 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 a uh, what to Google in order to get to right. Caregiver Metro West? Caregiving Metro West 
dot org. So it's caregiving, like C-A-R-E-G-I-V-I-N-G, yes. caregiving, caregiving Metro West. Yes, Metro dot org. org. And what I love about that site is that, you know, you're so used to going on sites that are generic, is that you can go on that site and you can actually click Westboro. Right, right? You exactly. Can say, so what are the services, all kinds of various services, not just government, but who are the professionals in this area? What's available just for Westboro? Right. So it's a terrific, Or terrific even finding list. a support group, and if there's not one in Westboro, yes. what's the nearest one? Yes. So yes. it is very informative. It's up to date. It's updated just about daily. There's a blog on there as well. So that's a really unique resource. But what we found out is that we really needed to get more to the community. Mm -hmm. And the communities are not aware of the impact of dementia. By 2050, 2050, 2050, there will be triple the number of individuals with dementia in the community. That and that now. is a staggering number. So are we prepared, are our communities prepared to work with folks with dementia right. to help them remain engaged in the community itself. Very often what we find with folks who have dementia and their caregivers, they're socially isolated, they do not like to go out. Um, it might be because someone is exhibiting a, dif a difficult behavior. So they tend to be very self-isolating and that should not happen. We should be a state without stigma. Alzheimer's and related dimensions have so much stigma around them. You can't get dementia by touching a person. Right. So we or by talking to them. Well, by or talking by talking to them, right. Because <laughs> so often, you know, you'll see somebody who is, who is aware that there's somebody who is, has some dementia issues and is kind of talk, maybe talking a little bit louder in, in a way that they don't think is appropriate. Right. And they just turn away. Exactly. People just, they want to pretend that this doesn't exist. Right. You know? But imagine a community where our first responders are trained. So if they come upon someone, say someone has fallen, and they need to get them into the ambulance and they're agitated, they can recognize perhaps they have dementia and then use some different behavior techniques to deal with that person. Yeah. Or going into a restaurant to have a meal. If I'm having, if I had dementia and I was having trouble with the menu, might you suggest one or two things rather than tap your foot and sigh because I'm not making a decision fast enough. Right, and maybe there's a special menu there that doesn't have 50 items on it. So you're right. not getting handed this thing that you just know it's a, just a ticket for failure, right. right? Or if I'm a regular, you know I like the chicken parm, just say, would you like the chicken parm today, Christine? Right, right, and, it's, and so often, I think if you speak to kind of the local restaurateurs, right, I, I wanna say as opposed to the chains, I suppose that's unfair, but, you know, but a lot of the local restaurateurs who've been going, I bet, I bet there are people here who've been going to Arturo's like forever. Exactly. Right? You know, Tavolino's, it's a new place, you know, but, but, but so, so they've seen their own customers aging and are probably doing a lot of those things, mm -hmm. right? But it may only be a certain waiter or a certain waitress. So the, the right. notion of really being able to give them, give them that sense of it. So, so that's, what, that's what you think about when you think of a dementia-friendly community. And so where do you start if you're trying to get, go down there? So how, how, let me go a different way. So what are you doing about it? What, you, what are we doing about it? Yeah. Well, BayPath received some grant funding from the Metro West Health Foundation uh, last year, and we started working in three communities, the Northboro, Hudson, and Marlboro. And we're about halfway through the process. We are mm -hmm. using a toolkit from the state of Minnesota, mm -hmm. and their initiative is called Act on Alzheimer's. They've developed this free toolkit. They've got all kinds of videos on their website, and it's all free doesn't cost us a thing. And you actually went out to, to Minnesota to learn all, all about I this, I right? did, and you went with me. To, it, together it, with several of the Council on Aging, yes. right? Well, the, from Hudson, Marlboro, and, and yes. Northboro. And yeah. we learned a lot. Because we went out there going, yeah, is this, is this all smoke and mirrors, it's, right? Yeah. And it wasn't, <clears throat> and we, right. we learned quite a bit. But the reason I like the toolkit is, A, it gives me the roadmap. Excuse you, I'm gonna go step back one more. Mm -hmm. So also, as a banner or someplace, we're gonna, set, we're gonna put the website where people can go see this. So if they're right. kind of interested in what may be coming, they can, mm -hmm. kind of, and, and what is that, what is that website? Do you? Actonals.org, A-C-T-O-N-A-L-Z dot -C -C -O -N -A -L -Z .org. org. We'll click you right to this fabulous, yes. fabulous website. Yes. So, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be interrupting. That's okay. Uh, the toolkit gives us a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And another reason I really love this toolkit is part of this process is surveying the community to determine what the needs really are in the community. 
because I feel it's very important that I, not living in Westboro or Hudson, I can't come into your community and say you need training. You need to determine that. Or who need, or to determine who might need training. Exactly. And what the priority would be. Right. Because Westboro so, is unique. Right? Exactly. And this is a grassroots initiative. This is done by the folks on the local level. It's not a Council on Aging initiative. It's not a Bay Path initiative. How it starts is that there's a group of people who are committed to this cause to really yep. make a difference in their community. Understanding that many people have had a personal experience with dementia or they may be afraid that they are headed down that path because we know that it does run in families as right. well. So you want to be prepared before you get there. But it's just to make your community a better place to live. So we've been working, we developed action teams in each mm -hmm. of those communities. Mm -hmm. They've already started their community surveys, and once that's finished, we tally up all the data, give it back to the action team in the community, who will decide what their priorities are, and then develop an action plan to move forward. So an example might be if they decide that education and awareness is most important, mm -hmm. well, how could we implement that? Well, maybe we create a bookmark that can be given out at the library. Perhaps we do more table shows about dementia and what you yep. can expect so we can educate the public. So there's a whole variety of, of possible options for what Absolutely. people may be doing. So can you talk a little bit about kind of the schedule of that or how that has worked in terms of timing? I, I know that you, you started working in those three communities. You went to Minnesota, we went to Minnesota in September. Right. And then, oh, and, and, and you hired somebody to help with all of this. Yes, right? we have a facilitator. Her name is Cindy. Yeah. So she is working with the action teams yeah. and guiding them along in the process. Just helping things, and th helping things keep to keep moving. Exactly. So I remember she got hired, and then the three communities started having their initial kind of action team meetings, what, back in February or March? Uh, yep, yeah, January things were getting yeah. together and yeah. started meeting in February, March. And it's now July. Now July. And, and people are out, you know, getting questionnaires filled out and doing yes. surveys and stuff in yes. the three communities. And when do you anticipate that those will be back? By the end of the summer, end of August. By the end of August. And then Bay Path, you've got, you've got resources to do the tabulation of all of that yes, stuff. Yes, we do. And then the action teams are going to get together based on that data and make recommendations maybe do a presentation to the community. When do you think all of that will be happening? That should be happening around late October, early November. The reason why I'm going through that is it is so many times, let me put it this way, we all volunteer, you know, there's a set of us that always end up volunteering, right. right? But you go to volunteer and you say to yourself, is this gonna be forever? Is this gonna be one of those talking things that like never ends? Right. But you're talking about something that started in February, so March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, whole process from beginning to end sounds like about a nine month process, right. which is quite something. We've, we've accelerated a bit in this first phase. Yep. Generally it's a 12 to 15 month process, mm -hmm. but Cindy has been moving things along very, very well. Right. But we don't want things to stagnate, and we do right. realize that people are taking their very valuable time to this project, so that's why there's a very clear path going forward there's a time frame, there's a plan, so you know when the end is in sight. Now that's the technical end, yeah. but theoretically you want to help your community remain dementia friendly. So action team may meet every three to six months just to say how are we doing? Are there other areas that we need to address? Right, because at the end of that process you're looking for, for each community to have a plan that's gonna be, so what's the next thing we're gonna do? Exactly. So it turns into real action. Yes. Once you've kind of figured out what the community is going to do. Right. Now, it's, it, it seems to me when I talked to George Barrett, he said that he had always already kind of raised his hand and said that he was, you know, going to be interested in participating in that action team. So that's yes. that's very exciting. Yes. Our phase two yeah. uh, is for the communities of Westboro and Sudbury. And I've spoken with George at length about this. Uh, technically, our second phase of funding begins October 1st. I'm mm -hmm. going to try and get it jump-started to September 1st yeah. so we can get this process underway for Westboro as well. So if any individual watching this show would be interested, and it doesn't have to be on the action team, maybe it's doing right. a few surveys out in the community because what we do is we survey a cross-section of the community, the business community, government, health, so you need folks to go out to elder law attorneys and right. to financial planners to see where they are in terms of 
what they think the needs of the community are. And, and the reason why I really wanted to do this show is that I want people, if you're going to be starting here in September, it's like the end of July now. So everybody go to sleep for a month. But right. then when, <laughs> when you get that call or you hear about it, right. to be t participating in this, it isn't a huge, huge time commitment. You get people involved in it. You know, as you know, I'm on the action team in Marlboro, and, and together with a whole bunch of folks, most of whom have had some family member that had dementia or a very close friend, and that's why they're doing it. Right, you know, exactly. Is that they're very, very kind of dedicated to right. trying to figure out all of that. Right. So now I'm going to give I'm going to give you two stories now because now this is with my hat on as a, as a, one of those action team interviewers. So I've been doing these interviews. Um, well, actually, I'm going to mention. You, you had mentioned to me that you had talked to, to, to Janice Long, the, the, uh, the, the director in Hudson, mm -hmm. who was also doing interviews. And, and w you mentioned her con that her comment was she was amazed by how unaware a lot of people were. Exactly. By this. Exactly. Right? So, it's, so it's, it, it, that part is kind of surprising also, that you realize that people have no idea, because mm -hmm. we're kind of in the middle of it, so we see it. You know, but you, people have no idea what the resources are. Right. So now I'm going to give you two stories. So I was talking to Craig Hunt, wonderful person. Hunt's Mobile in Marlboro is one of those institutions. His dad, Dennis, had the station. It's on Route 20. And so I was talking to him because when we were meeting in the action team originally, um, we were talking about, so what sectors in the community do we want to talk to? And, and within the business sector, what kinds of businesses? And someone suggested gas stations. And I was saying to myself, gas stations? I don't, you know, what would they? But, you know, that was one of the categories. And so we agreed to do gas stations and do a couple. And I agreed to talk to, to uh, Craig Hunt. And so I, I got together with him a few days ago. I said, so Craig, you know, do you have, one of the first questions on the questionnaire is, is do you have kind of personal experience as a business person in dealing with these issues? He said, oh yeah, all the time. I said, all the time? He said, yeah. He said, think about it. He said, if you've got a person who's got dementia and they're driving, right, and they're a little lost, where are they going to go? They're going to go to the gas station. So th this, hu th th this p group of people who are in some ways the most at risk, mm -hmm. right, are the people that he bumps into. And he says, we need to figure out how to deal with this. He gave me a couple of wonderful examples. He said, we had a guy uh, who uh, came in. It was not that many months ago. Right? And he came in, and he had left Boston because uh, he was doing a road trip. He was going to Florida, and he had his book. He has his maps and all of this stuff. But the only problem was he arrived in Marlboro at 4 p.m. So he had been driving around for eight hours and gotten from Boston to Marlboro. Oh, my right? goodness. Yeah. And so, and so Craig said, so, you know, what do, what do I do in a case like that? You know, he said, what do I do? Do I call the police? If the police come, what are they going to do? The, the, he, this man didn't commit a crime. Right. Right? He's not under some kind of a restraint. What do I do? And I said to myself, I don't have that answer either, but as a community, we need to figure that out. Right. You know? Give you a, se a second example. He said there was a person who came from Northrow, actually, from uh, from an assisted living facility in Northrow, um, and who, who came in who clearly did not know you know what he was doing and where he was going, and and uh, um, so I think he this person actually called the assisted living facility and the facility and the facility said well you know we don't have anybody on staff to go get so. We, once again, you're just saying to yourself, "How do you how do you figure this out?" Right. right? So that was that was one. So a second, I was talking to um, a, a, another lawyer, who does does a lot of work like I do in, in Marlboro. And and oh, and by the way, so Craig Hunt, his interest also is he ha there was a family member or is a, is a family member who has some issues, an older. Person. Okay. Um, so then I was talking to uh, to uh, um, another lawyer, and he said, "You know, one of the things we need to address." Because we were talking about the issues with elders and dealing with them as a lawyer, you know, but he but he has a family member, right? He said we need to address this problem of upselling of of these elders who have dementia, getting upsold things, right? Things that they don't need. He said his relative was recently at I don't want to name of the name of the at a, at a large chain store that sells among other things refrigerators, right? and went in to buy some small thing and came home with a receipt for a $1,300 refrigerator, right? That's not good. No. That is not good. <laughs> no. But, but you can understand in those situations, right, where you've got these large stores with certain items and things are being sold on commission, mm -hmm. there's this d com obvious tension between 
the, the management wanting to, you know, not be unfair to people, but at the same time, the management saying to the employee, you're getting paid on commission, so the employee has a real incentive to do this. Exactly, so, and they may not aware that someone has some cognitive yes. difficulties. They're just yes. selling the refrigerator. Or they may, and I think right. we need to be dealing with both. That's just like the, the example I know that we've talked about, you know, the issue with banks. We, if, if you Certainly the bank employees need to be trained, but to me there are two different kinds of training. There's the I really need to help so-and-so out who has dementia and is having trouble filling in the deposit slip or mm -hmm. getting the change versus um, this is the person I've known for a long time who suddenly has this new person coming in, their niece, their, and all of a sudden they're getting on all the accounts and right. the money's going away. Right. And what is, the, what is the way that we as a community can protect those people? They live in Westboro. They live in Westboro. What don't we owe them something, right. you know, to help them? Right. So it's it's it, it's a fascinating thing, and, that, and I go through those stories to say to people, to do a few of those interviews, it may op you know, it really helps your community. It's really helping your community. Right. And I think that we really don't think about this, and we really don't realize what is coming down the pike. So I think the awareness just in doing the interviews right. has just increased that awareness of. We, we need to do something as a community to help folks stay in their community, stay safely, remain engaged, yes. and help caregivers help people stay at home as well. Because the other issue we're dealing with, as I mentioned, is that isolation. So, you know, I may not want to take my mother out because she has some behaviors that are not acceptable in public. But say we, have, we can go do what's called a memory cafe which is designed for individuals and their caregivers to go for an hour and a half, two hours, and have a good time, have an activity. Right. People are be able to be engaged and to speak with each other. It's a social time. Which may even be occur at a restaurant. Exactly. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Real, real, on a right. Saturday, who else is there? Nobody, exactly. right? Exactly. Or on a Tuesday, right? It's like, exactly. How can, we, how can we work with the community to make these opportunities available to people? Right. To me, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, that's a win-win. That's exactly right. And I just want to go back to something you said at the beginning, you know, that the, one of the reasons why this is so important is that you know the numbers suggest that by 2050, um, the number of people with dementia is going to have tripled, right? right? Well, I remember a statistic that I've heard you say before that if you are 60, I think it's 65 at this, if you're 65 years old right now or over, you have a one in nine, nine chance of having dementia, that if you're 85 or older, you have one in three chance of having dementia. Exactly. So if you are 50 years old today, you're going to be 85 in 2050, mm -hmm. right? So what we're trying to build is a community that we can grow old in, right? And that a lot of people who are watching can grow old in. And isn't that the kind of place we want to live in? Absolutely. You know? We all want to stay at home. We really do. And I'd like to make it in a community that understands what I've liked, what I've contributed, and why I need to stay at home. Right, and I don't necessarily need to end the day saying to myself, oh, I remember everything I did today. I just want to end the day saying to myself, wow, that was a good day. Exactly. So Christine, thank you so much for coming on. This is, and you know, it's so important. The work that you're doing is just terrific. I'm very excited that you have a real champion here in Westboro. I'm sure you're gonna find many others, right? And for the folks who are watching, I hope when you hear about this that you'll want to participate in it. It doesn't, it isn't a big time commitment. They're not out there looking for money. They, it, it is very, very important. This is an important thing for the community. Don't you want to live in a place that's dementia friendly? So thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Art. And I'll see you in the next, uh, uh, the next installment of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you.